Welcome to this discussion and this conversation. My name is Ian Pfeiffer. I'm the uh, Maryland State Director here at SIX, but I also do a lot of work on our paid family and medical leave legislator cohort project that you'll be hearing a little bit about later. Um, and just a little background on paid family medical leave as an issue. Um, in the 30 years since fa the Family Medical Leave Act was passed at the federal level, which allowed some workers to, to get unpaid leave to protect their jobs, they, we have seen sort of very little movement at the federal level. There's been, it's been very frustrating for a lot of folks who would like to see a more robust program to the point that now the United States is one out of six countries in the world that doesn't offer some sort of national paid leave. Um, and, you know, in that frustrating dynamic in Washington, it's been legislators across the country who've taken the lead and moved forward. And we have seen, um, you know, great, great progress in a number of states enacting very robust paid family and medical leave programs that, that allow, allow people to be able to spend time with a sick family member or a new child and a number of other scenarios that, that without fear of losing their job and, and, and missing a paycheck. So um, I'm, I'm excited to be here today with uh, Representative Kristen Cloutier. She is um, a member of the Maine House of Representatives. She's actually the Assistant House Majority Leader and uh, was the lead sponsor in the House on paid family medical leave last year when it was passed successfully there. So thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Ian. Of course. Um, so, I, you know, I'm always interested in sort of the origin story of people who, who do this work. And I guess, you know, to, to tell us, a, if you would, a little bit about your background and how you got interested in obviously public service and serving an office and then really sort of became the, the champion of this bill and this particular set of important issues. Sure. So um, I uh, started out municipally. So I served on our city council um, as the city council president for two terms, well, three terms, uh, and then was overnight um, thrust into the role of mayor because the person who was serving before me um, ended up not being able to serve any longer, resigned, and uh, within the span of 24 hours on International Women's Day, um, I became <laughs> the mayor of Lewiston because the charter um, said that if you were the city council president and the mayor resigned, that was what happened. Uh, so also that same year, uh, while I was still the council president and the mayor, um, I had run for the legislature. So I was also serving in the legislature at the time that that happened. Um, and uh, also the mom of a six-year-old daughter at that time and the daughter of um, a woman who had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Um, and who had been living in Florida by herself um, and who we needed to move back to Maine because she couldn't actually live alone in Florida uh, any longer. Uh, and so was serving as a caregiver for my mom uh, during that time as well. So um, had a wild and crazy life for <laughs> a little while, about 10 months, um, and really sort of came to understand personally uh, what a caregiver's life looks like um, and had started out my work around that issue uh, by creating a grant program for family caregivers that was funded through ARPA dollars um, when I served on our Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee uh, and then um, was asked by the Speaker of the House at the time, uh, Speaker Fecto, to serve as the House Chair of the Commission to create a um, paid family medical program for the state of Maine. Uh, and so I co-chaired that with our uh, Senate lead on the bill, Maddie Daughtry uh, from Brunswick. Um, and so had had really sort of thought about the policy um, just as a caregiver for somebody in the later stages of life. Um, and through the commission really came to understand that um, the policy needed to be one that spanned birth to end of life um, and everything in between, right? Because None of us is, are getting any younger, um, and we're certainly all probably going to have health problems at one time or another. Um, and so, really, uh, became invested in the in the paid family medical leave policy over the course of serving on that commission. Oh, that's great. So, so uh, after the commission was done, right? Yeah, then it came time to to to, to, to run the bill and try to figure mm -hmm. out how to build the coalition to do it. And like, obviously, at six, we're very interested in sort of 
co-governance and how legislators yeah. and advocates and, and people who lived experience try to figure out how to tell that story to to do policy that will improve people's lives i guess can you tell us a little bit about the challenges maybe that came with that but also sort of the the successes you saw in being able to put together that kind of coalition yeah so um we were luck i mean lucky in one sense and i guess uh i don't know what the other term would be but we, we uh, the commission was formed through a piece of legislation that senator Dockery had uh, the commission was made up of, I'm, I'm going to talk about a commission and a coalition, and those are two different things. Um, the commission was made up of folks who had been appointed by the governor. Uh, so it was Senator Daughtry and I, we had two Republican colleagues from the legislature, one in the Senate, one in the House. Uh, we had, a, you know, people representing businesses of various sizes. We had um a doctor who worked with uh, moms and babies. We had, um, you know, folks who had been personally affected or, or would have been personally affected by a paid family medical leave policy. Uh, so really a really broad base of folks serving on the commission. And while the commission was doing its work, um, and, and prior to that, I would say for, you know, there's been a paid family medical leave coalition for, I would say maybe at least a decade in Maine, um, who have been, you know, really trying to push the issue and the policy and the importance of the policy, um, and finally um, decided they were going to take it to referendum. And so we said, we'd really like a chance to get this done legislatively. Can you work with us and help us to get that across the finish line? And if that doesn't work out, then we will, you know, support you in your referendum um, initiative. And so we formed this really amazing, I feel like collaboration between those of us on the legislative side and those working in the coalition. Um, I will say that Senator Daughtry and I were, uh, depending upon the day, either people's best friends or their worst enemies. <laughs> Sometimes it was a very lonely middle of the road kind of place to be um, because we were, you know, trying, try, trying to create a, the, the best policy for the state of Maine. And sometimes that meant sacrificing a little bit on this side, or it meant sacrificing a little bit on this side. Um, we were also working uh, with the governor because as we all know, at the end of the day, it needs to be something that the governor is going to sign off on. Um, and so that kind of, I, I would say both of those forces really forced us to sort of take a very deep dive into what the policy would be. Um, we, it was really important to Senator Daughtry and I personally, but I think also to the efforts of getting the bill across the finish line for us to um, do this kind of statewide tour. And so Senator Daughtry and I would go, you know, to various districts, some rural, some urban, we'd meet with community members, we'd meet with businesses there, uh, and we would take all that feedback back. And I think that, that um, that led to several iterations of the bill, um, and but but a lot of a lot of work over a period of time. Um, I would also say that you know in the spirit of collaboration, there hasn't really been another piece of legislation um, I think in the state of Maine that was worked so evenly between the House and the Senate. Oh. Um, we were true leads together and that doesn't really happen. Usually there's like a lead sponsor and a co-sponsor. Um, and we were we were both truly sponsors of this bill. And so um, it, it was the stars aligned in a lot of ways on this piece of legislation. Um, and that was, was pretty amazing. I love it, that's great. Um, yeah, and, and I will say it, the, the thing that, um, the thing that allowed Senator Daughtry and I to do our work so effectively and efficiently was that the coalition put their trust in us. And that this building can sometimes be a place where like it feels really un untrusting. Um, and so to have that kind of relationship um, was exceptional. And I really am gonna continue to look for ways to, to do that in other policy areas. That's great. Um, so I, I said at the top, you know, the Sixers created this paid family leave medical uh, um, 
sort of legislative cohort project. We're about a year and a half in now with our national partners, A Better Balance and New America. Um, and, you know, it, 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 just, just for the benefit of folks, it's a, you know, it's a cohort that meets monthly um, and, and really tries to sort of foster relationships with legislators who are working on the same issue across the state. And as you said, like the, the challenges in anyone's particular building and in their sort of ecosystem um, are unique, but are also similar to what someone else might be dealing with. And, and to be able to have a a kind of safe place to have conversations and sort of test out ideas um, we thought was sort of an interesting model. And so I'm curious, sir, as one of the first people who were in it, like how did you feel about that and what sort of value did you see maybe in stuff you could bring back to that fight as it was ongoing at home? Yeah, so I um, I was fortunate to participate in sort of the Zoom calls, but then also the Accelerator Conference. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that what the thing that has been most valuable to me is that different states are in different, like, uh, time, they're in different places in terms of the process. And so, you know, you have some states that are, you know, on their third try of just trying to get this passed in one chamber. And then you get some states that are just, that have gotten it past the chambers, but are trying to get it past the gov get it onto the governor's desk. Then you've got states who have got it passed, but now they're going into implementation and some are in rulemaking and then some are sort of at the end and that they, they have their, their policy. And being able to sort of, um, A, serve as a mentor to the folks who are behind us, but also have someone else serve as a mentor to us that are ahead of us. So uh, at the Accelerator Conference, Colorado was in the midst of its rulemaking process. Um, and we have a lot of rulemaking in our bill. And so uh, being able to sort of see, have them have them define for us the places where they wish they had paid more attention um, was really helpful because now we're able to put ourselves in those spaces when the time comes. Um, and to just sort of have, have that kind of um, mentorship but also kind of like a therapy session, you know, like you can complain about the things that are going wrong and someone can say, oh, that the same thing happened to us. So, you know, don't don't worry too much about it because it'll end up being, you know, OK in the end. Um, and then also just. Um, you know, you, we kind of get stuck in our own kind of bubbles and sort of being able to step out of that has been really helpful. Um, some states have also had referendums and so understanding it was helpful for us to see how that the good cop, bad cop piece of that kind of played out as we were going through the process um, and how we could use that to our advantage and, you know, where we maybe didn't want to try and, you know, put that as on the front burner. Um, and then just with this policy in particular, I think that um, the business aspect is really hard. And so hearing from other states how they were you know, making headway with their chambers or like what the arguments were and how to sort of rebuff those arguments or where it was important to take that argument into consideration as you were drafting the policy. So it really sort of served as like a brain trust, I would say, for us in, in getting this across the finish line. Well, that's great. Well, that's, 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 uh, that's wonderful to hear. And I don't want to take up too much of your time, but thank you for uh, joining me for a few minutes to have a little conversation about all the all the great work that you did in in Maine. Yeah, we love talking about paid family medical leave anytime we get a chance. <laughs> great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much, Ian. Have a great day. You too. Bye.